Evening all, welcome back to Kicking, oh bollocks isn't it again, Total Dust, and um, so just do the usual, follow me on Twitter, I'm not very well, I feel shit, but hey we're doing videos, so this is the fun of the game, uh, Dust514, let's go, right, floaty, sting like a butterfly, float like a bee, no, it's that fit basically, so we're just going to run that for a bit, and um, this is a real bastard of a match, there you go, there's a, there's a, a verb turned into a noun, or a noun into a verb, yeah, um, this is a bastard of a match, um, or if you're from Boston, bastard, because this is just one of those great examples where um, a really good team is opposing you, and no matter what you do, there's not a lot you can do to uh, to win. So it's a loss. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ruin it for you. Well, I've just ruined it for you. It's a loss. Um, so there we go. Anyway, let's talk about our little introduction now. The the thought, the thought of hot steaming shotgun goodness spurting all over the innards of a ship it's it's a bit sexual isn't it i mean i didn't mean to get, make it so graphic but it does come across as quite cool imagine that and i always remember reading um as a very young boy battlefleet gothic manuals yeah i was that sad kid who did that i i, I just love battlefleet gothic so much and they they did this little uh, i'll see if i can find it because um i don't know if i can link it maybe i can tweet it so there you go reason to follow me on twitter um, on this, in this rule book, they had a little snippet, which was like a little, a little kind of fan fiction. Um, it wasn't fan fiction, but you know what I mean. Where they kind of talked about a boarding action taking place on one of these massive capital ships. Now, you know, the Battlefleet Gothic capital ships are huge. They're just so big. They're massive. They're, they are just the equivalent of probably Titans. Yeah. Now, what happened was um, basically, and, and the whole world of Battlefleet Gothic is actually linked to basically humankind has lost you know its knowledge of technology it's not like it's very similar to the eve universe but in essence the the knowledge that created these huge starships from you know millennia ago has is kind of being lost so whereas and there's a lovely picture of this where you know, once you would have this cannon the size of a, a block of flats and before it would have like electronic loaders and it would be operated by a single human. Now there's like a slave gang who have to literally pull it with chains away from its breach, load, manhandle a shell the size of a bloody car into it and then load it back in with chains. I love that. And this is the future for Christ's sake. So I love the fact that they do that. Uh, and that's the setting the scene. So really the purpose of, um, of this little monologue, if you like, is because eventually you're going to have shipboardings with technology that's really old. Because, you know, you'd think in the 40th century there would be huge amounts of lasers and God knows what, but there's not. Actually, projectile weapons are still pretty much king. And they this little kind of snippet just told this wonderful story of two forces on different ships locked together and then basically trying to fight and defend against an attack. And what they said is they had... Um, I can't remember what they called them, but it was like combat shotguns. But these were like, you know, sort of slab shotguns, something like that. And they're specially designed to be used inside rooms. So you'd poke it through a door, fire, and it's like a blunderbuss. And it just fires this huge, you know, white hot you know, pieces of shrapnel into the room. And you just go from room to room, corridor to corridor, destroying anybody in your way and, and this little snippet talks about this kind of imperial navy uh, gang of people trying to protect you know the the this particular room on a ship and what effectively they do is um they just destroy half the crew with it as well because you know they they just literally fire these guns just to clear a room and they don't care who's killed they don't care who's in it because this is the future bro and it's pretty dark now imagine that imagine if that was going to be something within the game oh my flippity gibbet i would just pay money out my eyes for that because i think that's needed now i think there's been enough faffing about on planets enough faffing about on moons and planetoids it would be nice to see a game which is really um i think based upon you know the ship versus ship piece so I'm really hopeful. I know I'm going to be massively disappointed and I'll look back on this video in, in months to come when there's more of an announcement and I'm going to sit there and be well, well upset. Um, but look, at the end of the day, anything is good and I think we have to just accept um, what's coming, which is, you know, Eve is going to be, or Eve 2.0, Eve Revenant, Dust, whatever, calling it now. Um, it's going to be a different world. 
Um, I hope it's going to be a much more kind of supported one. I hope that they don't have to go through this kind of endless nonsense with the PlayStation networks and all this. My, my real hope is that it's just a much simpler, um, much simpler way of doing things. So, you know, post in the comments. I read some really cool comments about, um, you know, progenitor, uh, progenitors, that's a different concept entirely, uh, procedurally generated land. So you could, you know, if you do have to have it on maps, on um, on planets, etc., there is still the potential to have it as some form of completely random map. Which, you know, when you look at, and it's funny because uh, you know, Dude Loot made a comment about it being No Man's Sky, which is obviously interesting because that is going to be, I believe, 100% uh, procedurally generated. So there won't be any kind of, um, well, you say that there might be sort of areas of the map that are. It might be like Elite Dangerous, again, procedurally generated, but what they do is quite interesting, is they effectively have a small area of the map that maybe will just be generated flat because it's where they're going to put a base or something like that, which is really all that's needed. I don't know, I mean, I'm sure it's a lot more complex than it sounds, but thinking about it, it's, it's not a really a time to copy what others have done at this point. I think if CCP wants to create something that they... I think truly are the masters of, then that what they need to do is effectively um, kind of just create something that's completely new. And I do think the best thing to do would be something, if it's on planets or if there's an option to be on planets, make it procedural. So procedurally generate it and then see what you can do with it. And I think if they can do that, then that's pretty much half the battle won. Everything from that point can be quite templated. So you could have maps which are on ships, so therefore it's just a selection of various templates um, and so on so I'm hopeful I really do think if they can make that work it's going to be good stuff indeed and I, I almost can't wait because I'm excited about what potentially uh, the game could become so post some comments let me know what your thoughts are and uh, we will move on from that topic so the next thought I had is how maybe will they have some form of economy so for example you're not really going to pay your soldiers that go and fight on um, you know, on stations and such like that, are you? Or are you? Is it another Merc nonsense thing? Maybe, just thinking, maybe there has to be much more of a kind of grunt level of thought. So, you know, you, the, the person you play is actually a grunt, somebody who's paid by an alliance to fight. That could be a thought. So it could be much more of a soldier rather than a kind of free thinking um, Merc. I like the thought of that. I think that could be quite cool. Also, I like the idea of maybe, and this is just a thought, it could be something that your EVE pilot is your actual character. Okay, so number one. So that when you want to, you can transfer your, your consciousness into the clone of a soldier. So it's not so much a dust player versus a, a what's-its-name player. Do you know what I mean? If they can do that, that could be quite epic. So, you know, I'm quite excited to see if that's something that maybe they can do. Do you know what I mean? It's less kind of us and them it is just all one so the eve pilot actually can just press a button and then they're in the clone body of a soldier if they get that right that could be epic that really could now that kind of presents a problem because valkyrie is apparently standalone from eve so i've been told so that kind of um drops a bit of a problem because you're not going to have the uh, i guess the ease of linking um, three games, but you could, in, in I guess, in essence, link two. But you know, this is where I think it's interesting because this is a prototype that they're talking about, which could result in maybe the game just becomes um, an add-on, a module. Do you know what I mean? So I'm curious. I'm excited. Um, I have no idea where it's going. I think it's going to be interesting times. Um, I'm I'm really excited to think that there is going to be a future for the game. So there we go. Um, I think a few other things going on at the moment. I mean, again, I've had some amazing battles lately. I don't know what's going on. I think uh, just the battles we're having at the moment are turning into real, you know, kind of guts or glory kind of things. And, you know, I just, I'm having a laugh. I really am enjoying every game. So uh, if, if, you've, if you've come across me in game and I've killed you, I apologize. If uh, you've come across me in game and you've killed me, I'll come for you. And I think if you're not playing at all, then you're missing out because there is a huge um, amount of fun to be had uh, with this game. I think definitely worth definitely worth a look once more um, as I get plasma cannon. Good lord! So I think there's definitely quite a lot still to be enjoyed in this game. Um, I don't think you're going to kind of get a point where there's any point trying to level up or skill up anything in the hope that it will carry across. I think you should just entertain the fact that your name will be 
character cross, if that makes sense. So there we go. I mean, I'm I'm kind of excited to see what FanFest brings. I'm excited to see where maybe the game's going um, in general, to be honest. I think, I think it's funny because we did have that downtime from Dust for a few months, and I think definitely that was needed because the game, even at that point, did feel very samey. And it's funny because when I came back, only a few things cosmetically had changed. The game itself generally hadn't actually changed at all. So I think this is probably the right time to to change the game, do you know what I mean? It does feel like it's probably the, 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 the opportune moment. And my hope is is that they just produce something um, that's just really fun, compelling and interesting, but maybe just has that little bit more depth to it. I think if they just do that, then I'll be a happy chappy. Um, I think it's quite simple, really, the formula. When you look at a lot of these games, Battlefield 4, COD, you know, Planet Side 2 and so on, the actual game concept is pretty straightforward. What you're trying to do is just have a regularly good um, kind of fight, you know, round base where needed, but then you also have the ability, if you need it, to kind of do something a bit more in depth, so PvE, for example. Um, the, not having PvE, I think, has been the biggest issue to Dust. I, I do believe that. Just not having that PvE element meant that once you kind of have had enough of being stomped, for example, there wasn't really anything for you to go and do. Whereas if you think about it, in most other Mamorgs, there's always that ability to get away from players. And even if it's just killing boars in the safe lands, you're still able to go and do something that gets you away from dudes. Um, so I think that was probably another bit of an own goal. In EVE, for example, you can just go and mine on your own, you can go and you know, do whatever on your own. And that's the beauty of it, because you do have the chance to get the hell away from the people. So there we go. I'm I'm excited. I know I keep repeating myself, but I'm trying to I think I'm just trying to kind of gauge how people are feeling about this because a lot of people are I mean it's funny I was in a gang um, a few nights ago where people were not happy that dust was going. Um, I even got a, a wonderful mail from some dude who didn't know dust was going. <laughs> And he'd seen one of my videos and thought I was trolling. So that was a bit of a difficult reply. <laughs> As you can imagine, that was a pretty difficult one to kind of go you know, break gently. So, uh, yeah, I think there's not a great deal um, that anyone can do now other than just come and enjoy the game before it ends. Because I think yeah, this, this game going does actually cement quite an interesting um, time in a lot of gamers' lives. Because this probably will now mean that a lot of people will upgrade from PS3 to PS4, for example or Xbox One. So, you know, that's a cool thing as well. So I think definitely worth um, worth looking at. I mean, we're not going to do a PS4 or a, or a Xbox One just yet. Unless anyone kindly donates me one, which I highly doubt. I don't really, can't, I can't warrant it, you know what I mean? All the games that are on it are already on PC, and I've probably got most of them on PC. Plus, it's just a bit easier to record on PC. In fact, it's a lot easier to record on PC. So I think the reality is going to be that um, a lot of people will leave Dust 514 and then if they don't come to PC they're going to upgrade to something awesome like Planet Side 2. Maybe we'll do, in a few videos time we'll look at that, we'll look at what your options are if you're not coming to PC because there are quite some cool games coming on, um, on PS4 that are definitely worth looking at. I mean the one that really does spring to mind is World of Tanks. Um, it's funny enough Saberwing, the guy who used to, well CCP Saberwing, um, is now, or at least I believe he was, <laughs> the, uh, the the community manager for that game on Xbox or PS4, I forget. So, um, you know, that's pretty cool, so definitely worth checking that out. I honestly think that there's just so many games out there for you. Um, you know, the, the biggest one I think that's similar to Dust is obviously Planet Side 2, so if you've never played it, you will have a blast with it, but I think you may find that it's slightly, um, what's the word, it's slightly difficult to kind of maintain um, interest in it beyond I think a particular fitting style. What I mean by that? Well after you've done one fit it's pretty boring. But there we go. It's a nice open world map, there's plenty to do. Um, I would say it's probably a much more complete game than Dust um, but I think it's really you know kind of it, you'd have to try it and see if you like it because I played it and I played a lot of it but then very quickly I got bored of it and I couldn't tell you why whereas I haven't really ever got bored of Dust which is quite surprising and strange. So there we go. Anyway, hell of a match. I hope you enjoyed that. We will see you next time.